In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and configure Cumulus VX in GNS3. So history shows the list of commands. Bang 2 will allow us to see our LLDP neighbors. So I rerun this command. We can see the Cisco. And now we can see the Cumulus switch. Notice the Cumulus switch was learned through LLDP, whereas the Cisco switch was learned through CDP. So in Cumulus, to allow the PCs to ping each other, we need to configure bridged interfaces. So we need to put switch port one and switch port two into a bridge. Basically set up a switch or a bridged interface. So history shows us the list of commands. I'm gonna use command seven, in other words, nano, to open up the configuration file. And I'm gonna paste some configuration in here. We're creating a new interface called bridge. We are adding two switch ports to the bridge, switch port one and switch port two. This is a Cumulus Linux a VLAN aware bridge. So it's different to the standard bridge in Linux. There's a lot of documentation on the Cumulus Linux website talking about bridges. So we are using a VLAN aware bridge rather than a traditional Linux bridge. Cumulus Linux recommends the VLAN aware bridge as shown here versus the traditional way of configuring VLAN bridges. They also show you how to create an SVI or switched virtual interface on your Cumulus Linux switch versus the traditional way of doing it. So what we've done is create a VLAN aware bridge. We've set the PVID or untag VLAN to one and we've enabled spanning tree. I'll save that configuration. ifconfig will not show that bridge until we reload the interface. So I'm gonna run command nine. And now we can do ifconfig again. And as you can see here, we've got a bridge interface available on the switch. So on this side, sudo nano etsy network interfaces. I'm gonna paste the bridge configuration in on this switch. And then we'll reload the interfaces using command eight in this output. ifconfig shows us that we have a bridge interface available on the switch. So can PC1 ping PC2? Yes, it can. We've successfully configured these two Cumulus Linux switches with bridges so that the PCs can ping each other. So on Ubuntu 2, can we ping PC1? We weren't able to do that in the past, but now we can. The two Ubuntu PCs can ping one another because of the configuration of these two Linux switches. So CAT, Etsy, Network Interfaces, shows us the configuration. Notice it shows the entire file. If we used more Etsy network interfaces, we would be able to see one page at a time. You could also use less Etsy network interfaces to go back and forth through the configuration. So up key, down key, and then Q to quit. Linux, as always, gives you many, many options, and you've just got to decide on which option you prefer using. So that's essentially the configuration of the Cumulus Linux switches. On the Cumulus Linux website, they are showing us the CLI commands. So we're using the Cumulus Linux network command align utility. You can find out more information about this on the Cumulus Linux website but it's essentially a way to get a shell similar to what you may be used to doing with a Cisco router or other CLI rather than using pure Linux. 
what I'll do here, however, is do it the old-fashioned way. So let's create an SVI on the switch. So auto bridge dot one, I face bridge dot one. That's because we're using a VLAN one. So 1254 slash 24. I'll copy that so that we can make the change on the second switch. I have reload, so ping 10.11.254. Switch can ping itself and it can ping the first PC and the second PC. On the second cumulus switch, I'll paste the configuration in and let's give the switch an IP address of 10.11.253. Ping 101254. That works. Ping the first PC, ping the second PC. Now, at the moment, I've got the PCs in VLAN 1. You probably don't want to do that in any decent network. Cumulus Linux does allow you to configure multiple VLANs and put interfaces into separate VLANs, but I'll save that for a separate discussion. My Cumulus Linux course does show a lot of these options in much more detail. The brctl command shows us the spanning tree bridge. You can see the bridge ID. You can see that spanning tree is enabled on the bridge. You can see which ports are part of the bridge. On this side, we can see similar information. The mstpctl command show bridge shows us the spanning tree bridge information on the switch. So as an example, you can see the bridge ID, you can see the designated route and regional route. The switch is the route. Notice the path cost to get to the route bridge is zero. Whereas on this side, the path cost is 20,000. It has a route port, whereas the switch has no route port. It is the route. We can also look at ports on the bridge. You can see that switch port one is an edge port. Switch port two is not an edge port. Both ports are designated ports on the switch. Here on this switch, switch port two is the root port. Switch port one is a designated port. It's a spanning tree edge port. So that was a basic introduction to Linux and specifically Cumulus Linux. In my Linux for Network Engineers course, I'll discuss Linux in a lot more detail. It's important that you as a network engineer start learning Linux. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.